at the age of 1.5 till 2 years what you can do is ask your child to just scribble okay just give slate and chalk let your child just scribble and do anything that they want okay scribbling is important because you know child is at least you know grasping uh, one thing that you know this is something where you can you know start writing and all that so just scribble so i have given sarvam to scribble a lot during that age it has helped us later during our writing phase okay and once your child is done with scribbling age and you think that you okay, can uh, when you are saying to your child that make a circle the child is doing like this and if you are uh, if you are telling your child to make a line so he is doing that so then little by little you can start okay i am giving standing line standing line now you do the child will do child will do it imperfectly they will not do it properly but it's okay at least you are learning how to hold this and that is important during that stage uh, doing perfectly is not your objective do at least doing it that is objective okay so once standing line is done then sleeping line sleeping line sleeping line okay like that move little by little once they are done with that uh, ask your child that okay i am writing if you are coming to alphabets now okay for example so first you have to start with the standing line and sleeping line ones which are h t i l e f okay so these are standing and sleeping line alphabets and uh, these are the ones you should introduce first so before going to school what parents think that okay i'll make him uh, you know uh, practice alphabets uh, before they start school so that they can do it much better in school so what do they do they say write a write b c so this is not the way of starting because over here slanting line is used which is which should be introduced later first your child doesn't know how to do standing line sleeping line which are much easier than slanting line okay so first introducing slanting line it's not a good idea again there is a curve involved in b okay so this curving they learn kids learn at the end at the end of learning all the other alphabets okay again there is a curve involved over here you should not do with chronological order of alphabets it's okay we can do it like this and then you can move with the slanting line once slanting lines are so slanting line alphabets are v w k m n x there is y z a okay so once they are done with slanting line ones then you can start the last one that is that involves curves so that starts with b so that starts actually with so that starts with o q p b d c r s g j u so these are the alphabets that are introduced at the end last okay these ones and these ones okay so next i'm using play doh over here and i'm going to show you different ways how you can engage your child with play doh because play dohs are very much fun kids are very very interested when you you know attract them with play doh so i'm using faber castle play doh over here this one I'll put link in the description box. So the uh, total twelve sets come in this. Twelve sets like this come uh, with this. So why I love Faber Castell Play Doh and Sarvam also loves because they have animal creatures over here and at the backside also. So when you ask a child to you know I'll show you uh, put you know put the pressure and make it uh, the prints come on that. It's like a stamping activity. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you different things that you can do with Play-Doh. Is first is just you know take this for a child uh, around two years. You can introduce Play-Doh to your child. Before that, uh, some kids go through mouthing issues, so it is really difficult to handle Play-Doh with them. So what you can ask is. uh make it two parts and just you know ask your child to press, 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 press. Just ask. to press because putting pressure on a play doh is helping to develop the pincer grip entire grip of your palm okay so this pressing is important next you can ask your child you can sit on the floor or on table and just roll 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 
roll roll roll roll roll roll you know this way they learn how to roll so next is you can use coins like this you can get it any in any board game you can get this is uh, these are the coins from sequence game adult sequence game so what you can do is you can put anything anything you can put crystals stones anything inside this play doh okay and just close it like this you have to do it like this and then you offer it to your child okay make a several play doh re ready like this so once you introduce interesting things to your child of course your si child will come sit with you and perform those activities and hence their sitting ability will also increase and their concentration will also increase so once you present your play doh like this to your child you can ask your child to open it once when they are opening it for first is that the fun aspect they are uh engaging in right they find it very fun second is of course their pincer grip will increase because for us it is very easy child will take they will do it slowly slowly and you know gradually they will come here remove this put it here and like this okay so this way you can do one of the activities second is you can make small balls and give it to your child like this and you can give tong to your child and say you know put it in the box put it in the box or you can do color sorting with this different play doh balls you can make three to four cups like this and you can ask your child to you know color sort it okay so so next is to improve your child's creativity imagination you can engage in a uh, different kind of you know materials and putting it on play doh so once your child has rolled the play doh ask them to you know make a shape of snake now you can ask your child to use these stones or crystals or beads anything so you ask your child to put pressure like this with your finger and make snake skin okay so this is like a creative and imagination skills are getting improved over here so this is how you can do one of the thing now next is so i'm just showing you different ways how you can you know use different materials and make uh, your uh, child's imagination creativity strong but you can use anything that you have or what do you desire to you know present in front of so what i uh, usually do with with my students and with sarvam is make a shape like this okay and ask your child to put toothpick like this okay so what you are trying to do is once it gets finished you will see that you will see that it is looking like a porcupine okay these are the spikes of porcupine is just your imagination uh, level that you are increasing of your child so this is how you can make it okay so putting pressure and putting these toothpicks it becomes very interesting for your child to engage okay so next is you can use this play doh and ask your child to put it over here put pressure with your fingers as much as you can okay and over here okay and then turn it around you will see that you know um stamp through the stamping a pr prince came over here this becomes very interesting for your child you know that okay i'll make animal i'll make some you know thing out of it so let's just do it they'll you know try and engage more and more okay so next thing what you can do is you can tell your child to roll the play doh and start putting pressure with your fingers so like this like this you know putting pressure is developing strength in the finger So I have shown you various activities related to play doh, which are very very important during the early childhood education, because play doh is uh, one of the fun aspect the child really enjoys, and they love playing with it. Okay, so uh, these are the kids scissors that you get on Amazon or uh, at any local stationery shop. Okay, so first you have to start with play doh. You have to give to your child, roll it properly, and give it to your child and ask them to cut. Now there may be a possibility that your child is not able to use with one hand because they've not used scissor till now in their life. Okay, so what you can do is, uh, it's okay if they use with both the hands. First, teach them. open close open close and so do it like give it to your child and child will do like this like this okay so this is the first part of uh, using scissor now the second part would be 
child will uh, ask your child to hold with one hand so thumb goes in this and two fingers goes in this and open close open close open close first practice like this only and then give to your child this particular thing so what most of the kids uh, do is they try to move their scissors so you have to ask your child to hold like this and just cut okay after your child is done with play doh cutting and they master the play doh cutting with two hands with then one hand and then you can move to paper cutting okay so i'm not going to show paper cutting over here everyone knows that but yes you can then move to paper cutting and then maybe harder objects uh then paper okay you can use any straw that is available with you you can use play doh what you can do is you can take you can make small balls of play doh put like this okay and ask your child to put straw in that like this like this okay and then give beads to them okay and maybe you can do color sorting that clear put blue in blue thing like this blue red lot of concentration is developing over here by putting correctly you know in the straw like this okay so this is the color sorting activity so um so there are certain things that i need to add on to this video which are uh, you can offer coloring to your child as a tool scribbling with pencil scribbling with colors also uh, then you know painting give as much as painting activity as possible to your child uh, you know it could be finger painting it could be brush painting it could be stamping with certain things like potato stamping orange peel stamping anything you can give to your child your child should enjoy that activity that is the first motive second to improve the pencil grass and third is to improve the concentration so painting is also one of the you know most important thing that you should at least do it once in a week once in a week you should try it so i'm going to end this video over here i have shown you many fine motor activities i hope through this video i was helpful to you guys in uh, you know engaging with your child for fine motor and doing lot of fine motor activities on a daily basis helps kids for you know writing during the writing phase so do practice them do share the videos with other moms also you can check more videos related to fine motor activities on my instagram page i will put a link of my instagram page in the description box also i have certain activities related to fine motor in my activity kit i sell activity kits related to early childhood education drop link in the description box do check it out so until we meet next time happy parenting guys